what i want is uh, for you to really marriage your different passions together right because you are good at games but try to identify something else that you are really good and that's going to enhance your expertise when you actually join a games industry For the past year at Inside IM, we have been conducting one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions as counsel, short domain-specific courses as masterclasses, and university-affiliated certificate programs. Now, we are extremely excited to announce that we have a new home for all these highly rated programs in altuni.in. So, if you are looking to earn a high salary, get a promotion, switch jobs, click on the link in the description or just visit altuni.in. Thank you, enjoy the video and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Cheers. When I was studying the engineering, uh, because I always wanted to get into the games industry, and we had this campus placements, you know, where a lot of IT companies used to come. And I was having no interest in sitting for those placements because I knew, you know, there are no gaming companies in India that would come for placements, basically, right? So what happened is uh, I used to skip all of those, and suddenly out of the blue, I got a call from a few of my classmates. So basically, she found an article in the newspaper and she noticed that there is a company called Level Up in Mumbai. Apparently, they are looking to hire someone in the field of games, right? And then I applied for it. It was basically for a gameplay expert position at Level Up India. So it's a Philippine company and it was a pretty unique experience because uh, they called me for an interview at Taj in Mumbai. The interview, I believe, was for about two hours. So it was just about, you know, the interviewer, he had, come, he had come down from Philippines and he was uh, like a very famous game master for Ragnarok Online. And we were just talking for two hours and then, you know, he decided to hire me, basically. My entry was to work as a gameplay expert for Level Up okay. Games in uh, Mumbai. Uh, after that, I got uh, an opportunity to, you know, start my career as a game designer. That was my first uh, entry into actually making games, right? Because as a gameplay expert, it was about managing someone else's game, right? As a game designer, I actually started to, you know, learn new things and make my own games. Mm -hmm. And when I joined Nazara, I think uh, it was a very beautiful opportunity because I got to work as a producer at Nazara. So that was very important because as a producer, I got to learn about people management, you know, handling budget for games. How do you communicate with your external clients? You know, how do you make sure your game is taking the right path. So this were like my initial uh, paths before I went into Ubisoft and learned a lot more, obviously. So we were also, I would say, one of the first in India to work on Java 3D games, which was using JSR 1.4 API and Guru 3D. So what we started to do is, uh, we started to port certain PC games to the mobile platform, right? Because it's an easier entry and it allows you to learn a lot rather than making your game from scratch. So some of the games that we worked on was Kickshot Pool, 3D. And I remember we also worked on Anime Bowling Waves. We also had the IP of Lauren and Hardy. So apart from this, uh, which I said that I was also working as a producer. So this were, I would say, like the high-end games in the year of 2005 and 6, right? Somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, I was also in charge of making very small hyper casual games for the old reliance handsets if you remember those handsets were like uh, did not support colors at all right and you were supposed to make sure that the games are very small in size right not more than 1 mb or 2 mb something like that mm. so it was very challenging and i had to keep making sure that we keep shipping games every 14 days you know to make the customer happy so it was like a dual responsibility of making high-end games and also making some very small casual games for Reliance. At Ubisoft, uh, the biggest benefit was, you know, the exposure to other industry veterans and you actually interact with them, you learn from them directly, right? So the team I had and the mentors that I had were exceptional at Ubisoft, right? Uh, they sent certain employees for training to other studios, right? So I was basically sent to Paris in France and we had like a 14-day course in a castle 
so where we learned about designing games without using computers and when it comes to having our first nintendo ds game at uh, ubisoft india so it was again an incredible opportunity because making something for nintendo is also a dream come true right they have guidelines for everything so if your game gets rejected then they you know you have to resubmit your game until it gets approved and i remember our game did not get rejected it got actually accepted uh, at the first try so it was also amazing as a producer what you really need to understand is how do you make sure your team is you know working effectively under different constraints so what it means is basically you have to make excel tables and project management plan right you have to actually make sure that your game will take 4 months to make for example a mobile game right so within this 4 months how do you divide your time you spend you know 15 days for prototyping and how many man months are those how much money can you spend for the prototyping so everything to do with money management and which people are the right for that particular game you know so as a producer the benefit is you can actually pick people so what happens is we have multiple producers right but i want a particular programmer to work on my project project management and product management is what a producer really has to do as a designer he has a lot of conflicts and fights with the producer right so i this happens because as a designer he wants to push his creative vision as much as possible in the project uh, but keeping to push your creative vision can be expensive in the end right so the this is where the producer comes in so the producer's mind is supposed to take off and he's like you know we have this many features and we have already spent x amount of money and we have to you know stop designing and start making the game after 3 days else we will run out of money in my case uh, because i have had like short missions out of india when i was at ubisoft uh, so i realized that you know i really want to have like long term career outside of india right and europe was one of the places where i really wanted to be when i came to malaysia it was basically i got head hunted so i got an opportunity someone found me on linkedin and they gave me a very interesting opportunity to work in malaysia so i was offered the role of a game design head over there and basically i had my own team for r&d and making educational games and from there eventually i came to munich so it's the same thing because i got an opportunity to work in europe for a long term and working as a design director uh, was also a dream come true again to continue working in this field so i would say uh, game industry in asia is quite different from game industry in europe and north america so i can tell you that the asia's market is the fastest growing gaming industry market in the world right now so it's growing yeah. really fast at the same time the biggest markets are still europe and north america so the type of games that come out from asia are quite different so they focus a lot on mobile casual online experiences and a lot of localized content you know which kind of caters to a very specific audience in asia right so you could maybe find few games that have mainstream appeal outside you know in the western market a game that is made in asia right and it's kind of the other way when a game is made in europe or north america so usually mm-hmm. games from europe or north america has a lot of wide appeal you know it satisfies the mainstream market and they also make a lot of premium products compared to you know rather having some free to play experiences which is very heavy in markets like japan and china basically right okay. and in terms of uh, where you want to work for and you know which is good for visa and everything i can see that it boils down to a couple of different factors is first you have to identify the type of games that you want to make right okay. that's your first thing and the second would also be you know certain companies have language barriers so the biggest is uh, japan right so japan is a country that i would say a lot of gaming buffs they always you know think of having like a proper career in a games industry in japan so in japan it's very hard for you to get in if you do not speak japanese right okay. i know a couple of my friends designers who actually learned japanese before applying to companies in japan uh, i would still suggest you know to try out in singapore because singapore is also biggest in south east asia and other places and right now there are a lot of festivals i would say the biggest is uh, global game jam that keeps happening from time to time and because of a lot of resources available online i mean you can download an engine for free you can run tutorials i mean you can go through tutorials and you know develop a game in two days so i would say uh, you should really do that you should form your small group and you know make a game and apply for global game jam you should attend events like casual connect 
if you can or go to gdc whenever possible right so events like this help you connect with a lot of industry professionals it's very important to know that you like games so you are already i would say first step is already there right so you know you want to make a career in games but the next important step that you really need to understand is apart from games where else is your passion so what it means is are you good at drawing or painting you know mm-hmm. or are you good at writing characters or are you good at you know building sculptures or structures because depending on this what i would advise is you know if you're good at writing then maybe go and do a literature course or you know if you're good at mathematics and solving complex mechanical problems maybe join an engineering degree right because what i want is uh, for you to really marriage your different passions together right because you are good at games but try to identify something else that you are really good and that's going to enhance your expertise when you actually join the games industry and this is what personally i have found in my experience also in my case i had also subscribed to a lot of gaming magazines like uh, computer gaming world and pc world and they usually had a demo disc in the magazine so they had you know share with uh, game demos and applications that you can fiddle with and learn from those right so i used to do a lot of this and apart from that i also bought a lot of expensive books <laughs> uh apart from studying from engineering so i remember there was this books that i bought back then called game programming gems so it was a very famous book and uh there is this place in mumbai which used to sell uh games game books basically back then for now i can recommend there are like two channels which i really like so on youtube there is a channel called game makers toolkit which is very useful and there is also another channel called extra credits which is also very good so i would say these two channels are quite good so there is one book which i really like called game development and production uh, by eric bethke and there is a book called a theory of fun for game design by raf koster right which also had recent uh, re- revised editions so i think you should get those and there is a book called flow optimal play experience right uh, if i remember right the full name of the book but it's basically okay. flow it's basically about psychology of keeping the players in the flow when designing the games oh. so oh. you really need to know about you know player psychology and a lot of these things to be a better game game designer in the end so when you are making games you cannot spend 5 to 8 hours a day just to play games and you know develop your pro gaming skill sets because uh, i mean it's just not doable right so when you are making games you still have to devote i would say like certain time a day or a week you know you pick up a game that you really want and you try to have a change of your mind and learn from what different games are doing out there so one thing you should never stop is you should never stop playing games when you are actually making games right because you don't you really need to understand what's there in the market and how is your game going to be really different when it comes out i think the first thing someone should have told me was you know designing games is not just about writing stories on a piece of paper right <laughs> because you have to have a lot of things when designing it's not just about writing so this is something that i realized when i started working professionally as a designer right and not before that then i would say the next thing would be you know uh, how do you make sure that you are designing for the right person because usually what happens is uh, as a gaming buff you want to like just like what you said right you want to have the next dota or the next pubg so it's not just about going there and trying to make dota right you have to really understand uh, who is the demographic who is the target audience and why you are making a game for that particular audience right so usually early beginning amateur designers they cannot really understand about player experience right and it was something that was at fault in my case also when i was young and i was starting out i just wanted to design like the most ambitious game out there but it doesn't work like that right you really need to understand the target audience. and the third most important thing is uh, reverse engineering games so which i kind of uh, was doing but not doing that well so what it basically means is uh, you need to get back on the board and you need to you know try to figure out why a particular game is so famous or why do you really like that game you know you have to break it down do analysis and reverse engineer the mechanics of fun so to say right so this is something that i did not do before being a professional game designer right 
So this is something that would have been helpful knowing today. Thank <laughs> you.